Okay, what I'm going to attempt today is playing around with um, the peel and stick laminate from Walmart. And this is just contact paper and it comes in this big roll. <laughs> but what I do is I cut a rectangle out big enough to fit my cup, no matter what size cup I'm using. I do make it a little bit bigger um, than my cup. And then I tape it down to a canvas. This is just a 16 by 20 canvas. And then I paint over top of this canvas with um, this other product from Walmart. Um, Kills 2 All-Purpose Interior Exterior Primer. And I give it two really good coats. And I paint over top of that contact paper. Let that completely dry between each coat, and then once you're done, you're ready to apply alcohol inks on this, is what I'm doing with this one. Um, if I was doing an acrylic skin, then I wouldn't even bother doing this step. But the alcohol ink needs this texture. Um, so, I'm going to gather my alcohol inks, and we'll put a design on here, and we'll cut it out to uh, trim it down to fit a cup and we'll go from there. Okay, what you need for this project is uh, some type of sponge. This is just a, I think a sea sponge. Uh, a piece of uh, clean grab. Your choice of alcohol colors. Today I'm using um, Poppy Field, Aquamarine, Botanical, and Honeycomb. So uh, you also need alcohol. This is 91% alcohol in a little spritz bottle. I think you can get these at Dollar Tree maybe. But what I do, uh, make sure you're wearing gloves because this can get very, very messy. Let me open all of my alcohol inks real quick. Hopefully. They haven't been opened in so long. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um I'm going to take the alcohol in the spritz bottle and I'm just going to mist over top of this um, contact paper. What is that? I'm assuming that probably came from my gloves, so I'm not going to worry about that. I had to wear old gloves because I couldn't find mine. And then I'm just going to drip ink. Drip, drip, drip. Any way you want. Doesn't matter. That was the poppy seed. This is the uh, aquamarine. Some green. It looks like a hot mess, huh? And last but not least, some yellow. Okay, now I'm going to spritz again. And then I'm going to take my contact paper, I mean, shoot, um, clean wrap, open it up because I kind of crushed it a little bit, and I'm just going to lay this down any way and just press. Keep pressing and pressing and mushing. I'm going to 
do the same over here. Just keep pressing. Pressing. Oh, I think I tilted my camera, sorry. <laughs> and just keep pressing until you get the look that you're going for. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just having fun. But it's a very pretty fun. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to spritz it again. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to keep pressing until I get a look that I think will be pretty on a cup. And I'm almost there. One more time. I'm going to get a new piece of the clean grab. Hopefully I can get that with these gloves on. <laughs> okay. And again, this clean grab hates these gloves, I'm telling you. I'm just going to press. I might have waited too late. Yeah, I waited too late. Sorry. Just spritz it again. And begin laying your wrap. You could use a Walmart bag as well if you don't have this clean wrap. The only thing I don't like about the Walmart bag is you can't see through it, so I don't know if where you're pressing is where what it's going to look like. Okay, I think that's pretty good. It's all bright, it's colorful. I like that too. I might do that, just let it dry. All trial and error, having fun. Okay, let's see what that does a moment. Now, um, I'm going to let that dry for a second and see what it turns out like. In the meantime, I'm going to get a little Dixie cup and put a little bit of 91% uh, alcohol in it. Just a little, it doesn't take a lot for this part. And I'm just dipping my fingers in the alcohol. And I'm going to just flicker. This makes bigger than the little spritz that we had on there. I absolutely love this. And you can do this as much as you want to. I love all of these colors. This would be a pretty peekaboo Jurassic Park cup. <laughs> That's what I think of when I see it anyway. Okay, I think that's good. Um, I'm gonna let this dry. And then we'll cut it out to fit as a template around our cup. 
so that's the whole piece kind of hard to get in the camera because my camera won't raise up far enough but that looks pretty awesome I think if you want a colorful cup <laughs> so I'm gonna let this dry for just a little bit and I'll be back okay my ink is completely dry and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attempt to peel this up And all you're doing is removing the um, masking tape from around the edge of your um, contact paper. So once you have that done, you'll have a complete... It'll be like a big old sticker, just like if you were working with um, printable vinyl, I guess. And I'm also going to test this out. I did it a little bit tonight. Um, sorry, that is very loud. <laughs> I'm also going to test this out to see if my Cricut machine will cut through this because I think it will. I've got to play with the settings a little bit earlier. I did, I don't know if you can see it against this background. Earlier I did some leopard print and I cut it on my Cricut machine and it worked pretty well but it didn't cut through it and I had to tediously all of these out of a sheet like this but um, I think if I fool with my settings a little bit I should be able to get that to work okay so we are almost there all right I think that's the last edge and now we have this beautiful laminated sheet well okay there we go so now we have this big full sheet and it's just like I said it's just like a big old sticker uh, when you peel this off then your design is here so now the goal is to cut this down to fit our cup now the cup that I'm going to be putting this on I think I'm going to use a straight cup um, from Makerflow. It's a 30 ounce thick cup. It's a beautiful cup. And what I'll do is I will figure out exactly where I need to cut this. I don't want this white edge. So I will put my cup in the center a little bit. and let it overlap some and I know that I need to cut it roughly here so I'll come on the back and mark this and that's exactly where I'll cut it okay so I'm going to go ahead and make my cut along this line now this being a straight cup it works out really really well if you were using a cup that tapers of course you would have to make a template for your cup or purchase one or find one on Google whatever suits your fancy on that part um, I did make a temple uh, a temple I did make a template for um, my last little 16 ounce cup um, but that's not something I do all the time and what I'll probably do is I may 
you could cut this straight to meet exactly with this side, but I may just let it overlap a little bit. Um, which means I'll just come in here and just randomly cut out all of this white. You do not have to do it this way. This is just something I, I, I'm doing myself. Um, because once it's on the cup, and if you're especially going to do a peekaboo out of it, it really, it does not matter. Okay. So, I lift it jagged like that. Now, let me see what it's going to look like on the cup. And see, those colors will just flow together, and you'll never even know that it was a... Um, that way I don't have to worry about matching that seam exactly. So that's how I'm going to apply this to the cup. So what I'll do is I will peel the straight side first. And I'll just peel it part of the way back. Wow, my hands are already screwed up. I am so messy when it comes to this stuff. Hopefully I can get this corner. <laughs> if not, I'm going to scream. Holy cow, let's see. I thought I lifted that while ago. I'm going to lay my cup down. I am not going to worry about my edges because I have a cutting edge tool. But if you do not have that, um, you can cut this perfectly for the width of your cup. So I'm just going to lay it down and press it. Now as I go, it's just like a vinyl wrap. If you were doing a vinyl wrap, it's the exact same process. The only difference is you're using contact paper. And I'm just going to keep rubbing these to make sure I get all of this air out. Oh my, this is gonna be so pretty. Now, if you screw up, uh, this lifts very easily. I mean, I could literally just take this right back off the cup. I'm not gonna do so, but I could. to the end. I wasn't even going to keep a 30 ounce cup for myself, but I may. <laughs> I just can't imagine such a big cup. But people love them. Okay. Um, let's see. I might have screwed up here. But that's okay. I'll show you how to fix that if that happens to you. Okay, now in the perfect world, I would have brought my design up some so I wouldn't have this gap here, but I can easily fix that, I believe, and all I'm going to do is cut a piece from my scrap. I'm just going to cut this green and red out.
and peel off the back. Okay, that green and red piece is not going to work. So I'm gonna find another piece. But in the meantime, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just gonna go around the top edge of my cup. I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom of the cup. And just trim away. And then I'm just gonna press this. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the bottom down here. Gotta get me a starting point somewhere. <laughs> it's sticky. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to follow that line, oops, of the bottom rim of my cup. Then I'm going to press this. I'm not worried if I get a few wrinkles here at this edge because once you have epoxy on it, you never know that anyway. So I just press it and press it and press it. Okay, so I have to fix the edge of this cup. Previously, I had cut out uh, green and red, and I was going to just place it on here like so. I still may. And that might look okay. But um, I thought it would look hideous, but it really doesn't. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick this on my cup. If it wouldn't have worked out, then I would have took one of my scrap pieces and found another spot, matched it up with that area, and cut it out. Um, I have this extra piece, um, which will work out really well for the bottom of the cup because we'll just cut a big circle out and stick it on the bottom of the cup. So um, let me get this stuck on here and then we'll work around this edge here. Okay, so I'm just gonna place this down here just to cover up that silver screw up. And voila, I don't think you would ever know. So, all right, let me show you my new favorite tool. This is called the cutting edge tool from Wicked Shimmer Supplies. Uh, it's my absolute favorite. Now it doesn't come on this big board. My husband put this on here for me um, and his friend. But I had them to do that so I wouldn't have to hold this down every time I want to cut the edge of a cup. So what I do is I scoot my cup. You'll see the razor blade here. I scoop my cup up against this razor blade and I just turn. Now I may have to go over this a couple of times. I am pressing in a little bit because I want it to score through that contact paper. This tool is amazing. Okay, I think that might be good. 
And then what you do is you just peel this away. And you have a beautiful, beautiful, complete straight edge all around the top of your cup. It's amazing. <laughs> Best tool ever. So, if you guys don't have one of these, I suggest that you go to Wicked Shimmer Supply. Um, they have a Facebook page, a Facebook group. They have a website. Just do a little bit of research and you can find it. And my next step is to cut a circle big enough to fit the bottom of my cup. So I'm going to do that real quick and stick it on the cup. Okay, so to get my circle, I just found something round that would be a template. And I just drew it on the back of the contact paper and I'm just cutting that out. And if I were to screw up, I have this other piece. But I could also use this piece, if my Cricut machine will cut it, to cut a name out. Um, that's a good idea for these. So the next time I might, might make my design bigger so I can have enough to make other things to go on the cup. So there's my template. I mean, my circle. <laughs> and now I have to get the back off again. Okay, finally. <laughs> that is so tough. And what I do is I just stick this on the bottom of my cup and center it and press down. I hope this isn't too big. Let me test it with this. Oh, that might be okay. But I don't know if I can do it at this angle and get it right. I'm going to try though. Now I'm not worried about the edges because I think I'm going to be doing either a geode or a peekaboo with this anyway. So I'm not worried about this edge. And I just press it down, press, press, press. Make sure you get all the air out. Sorry if my camera shakes. It is attached to my desk and I, I really wish I had a better camera set up but I don't okay so there's the bottom of the cup and if you see you still see the silver here it's because I got it off a little bit but that's okay I'm not going to worry about that um, because whenever I decorate the cup anyway this part's going to have paint over it so there is our beautiful cup and what I will do um, normally in a place like this I would add a name or something if I was just going to leave the cup like this but since I'm doing um, a peekaboo or a geode over it, I think, um, I'm just going to leave it like that. So, what I'll do now, <coughs> excuse me, is I will tape this off with masking tape. And I will coat this with a coat of Mod Podge. It's just regular gloss Mod Podge. You can use the matte, the satin, it doesn't matter. But I will give it a nice coat of Mod Podge. And what the reason I do that is because a clear coat, like Krylon Clear Glaze, if you spray it too thick on your cup, it will make these colors run and fade. And I don't like that. I want to keep the colors vibrant. So doing it with Mod Podge first gives me that effect. Now, after I put the Mod Podge on here and let it completely dry, I'll take it outside and spray the clear coat over top of that and let that dry and then it'll be ready for epoxy. So I'll show you guys what it looks like once I have epoxy on it and we'll go from there. But that's the basic technique of doing an alcohol skin, I guess, <laughs> instead of an acrylic skin. <laughs> I've got an acrylic skin. Um, drying it's been drying for a couple of days now um but it's just basically the same thing it's just an acrylic pour on the contact paper and you do the exact same process so it's not very hard if you're not familiar with doing um, acrylic pours just go to youtube and watch a few try it out 
You can't go wrong. It's just paint and contact paper, basically. So, that is our beautiful cup. I absolutely love it. These are my favorite cups to do anyway. I like doing these even on without doing the skin part. Just paint the cup white and do the exact same process. It's very, very easy. So, okay. I'm going to get this ready for epoxy and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, I've got my uh, cup taped off and I've got my Mod Podge ready. And I just take a big brush and all I do is I just brush a nice coat on here and I let this dry. Ooh. Well, my pink ink is kind of running, the red, I mean, but I'm just going to go with it. However, to keep from contaminating my Mod Podge, I'm putting it in a different cup. I've not used that red, so what I'll do is I will brush that on this poster board that I have laying down here. And I'm going to try to hurry and do this. Wow. I will know next time not to use the poppy red. So if you have poppy seed, I mean, if you have another red, try that. I've never had one to do this. That was the whole point of doing the Mod Podge. <laughs> that was a disaster. I just hope it didn't ruin my cup. I can't imagine that it will, but who knows. Okay, now I got to do the bottom a little bit. That red was a disaster. Um, I'm hoping it didn't ruin my cup, but I'll remove my tape, let this dry completely, and then I'll tape it off again, take it outside, and spray it with a good coat of clear. Uh, glaze. I think it's the Krylon triple thick clear glaze. So I'll see what this does. I really hope it didn't ruin it. I will be broken. <laughs> Trial and error. I will probably never use that poppy seed again. <laughs> so we'll see what it does. Okay, so my cup is completely dry now and that did not ruin it at all. If anything, it just gave it a little bit of character. I will know not to use the poppy seed red whenever I do these cups. I don't remember that happening before, but who knows. Um, I may have used a different red before. But I'm getting ready to take this off. I'm going to take it outside and spray it with Krylon Triple Thick Clear Glaze. I will spray it at least one or two times, let it completely dry. Then I'll bring it in and um, get ready to epoxy this. When I do my epoxy, I'm going to be adding, I think, a little bit of the Glitterazzi wedding dress. Uh, just a very, very little, just enough to give this some sparkle. I would have used um, opal, but the only opal that I have is, it has a little bit of red in it, and I don't want to put red on this. Um, so this has a little bit of silver in it, so I think it'll work fairly well, hopefully. But there is our cup, and I can't wait to see it under the epoxy. <laughs> I hope you guys tried this one. I'll show you what it looks like whenever I have it on the turner. Okay, I was going to add wedding dress to my cup, and I did, and it really didn't give me the look I was going for. So I'll use that on another cup <laughs> another time. Um, I ended up putting a little bit of disco ball in the cup and I think it turned out much better. This is a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, colors, I should say. But, um, so I ended up putting just a little bit of this in my epoxy and um, it looks amazing. 